Well, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh released a new version of the Defence Research and Development Organisation Procurement Manual 2020 on Tuesday. The previous procurement manual was modified in 2016. This is being done to encourage more participation of Indian industry, including startups, micro, small and medium enterprises in defence research and development. Some enabling measures of uh, PM 2020 are exemption of bid security and performance security up to 10 lakh rupees, no negotiations for commercial off-the-shelf items and services wherever price discovery is happening through market forces. In this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyse DRDO's new procurement manual. Joining me on the programme today are W. Selvamurthy, former Chief Controller, R&D, Defence Research and Development Organisation, Ratan Srivastav, Defence Industry Expert, and Ajay Banerjee, Defence Correspondent of the Tribune. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of uh, The Big Picture. All right, uh, uh, Ajay Banerjee, I'd like to begin the programme with you first. Let's first try and understand and analyse, of course, what is the big change really as far as uh, Procurement Manual 2020 is concerned. Frank, good you have chosen the subject. It's a very good subject. I see three important aspects in it. First of all, it, uh, it talks about how the lowest bidder, the L1 called in the government parlance, if the lowest bidder cannot complete the contract, the contract will go to the second lowest bidder. Under existing rules, the L1 in case is unable to fulfill the contract, the contract goes to the uh, tendering process and it takes years for the tendering process to be complete. Now, the second lowest bidder will come into play automatically and he will be asked to supply the goods. This will cut short any red tape, any hanky-panky and allow quicker and faster procurement. Point number two in this manual is very important. It talks about advanced payments. See, defense equipment by nature are expensive and very few people make them. Say, for example, a company starts to make equipment worth 10 crores. The advance given to that company will be much more in quantum than been given now. Because, see, the industry naturally in our country functions on credit they have taken from the banks and those credit interest rates are huge for the industry to pay back. Defense equipment is a long gestation period and a long manufacturing period. It is not like making a car. It, any product to make uh, it takes years to rectify. So you will have to have give them some kind of incentive and this is a very good incentive. And the next point which I see is important is that uh, how the contracts will be given to people who have more MSME structures, the DRDO is bringing in more people to the MSME structure. The MSME and the SME structure are, I believe, the backbone of our goal of being Atam Nirbhar. That's how I see it, Frank. Absolutely. All right. So, Dr. Selvamurthy, let me bring you into the picture now. So, what does this mean for our entire procurement ecosystem? Thank you very much, Mr. Frank. <clears throat> this policy... In fact, the procurement manual uh, 2020, the DRU has brought in a very opportune time today when the country is very vibrant and the country is looking for self-reliance and critical defense technologies. And Honorable Prime Minister has promulgated the Atmanirbhar Bharat and Start Up India, Stand Up India, Make in India. All this is going to create an ecosystem for defense industries, particularly uh, for uh, it, it, it's a boon for the defense industries, domestic defense industries, because it's a huge market. Today, if you look at uh, the target which the defense production and including export has been set up by the government of India today, it's about uh, 25 billion US dollars in the next five years. And similarly, the government spending, which is going to be on defense, including the defense R&D, is going to be of the order of 130 billion dollars in the next five years. So I think it's a great opportune time when uh, this whole thing is promulgated and DRDO has also evolved over a period of time. Today, they make critical strategic defense technologies like uh, the strategic uh, materials for nuclear delivery. And we also have missiles, aeronautics, radars, sonars, torpedoes, electronic warfare and uh, materials and chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear protection, life support technologies, a vast canvas. Today, DRDO has developed the capability. DRDO is also working with uh, more than 1,800 industries. I think most of them are in the MSMEs. And today, major industries like LNT, Tata's, Mahindra, Mahindra, uh, Reliance, all of them are investing in R&D, so in a big way. So the whole scenario has changed the last five years. 
So this is this has come in a most opportune time where you need to build flexibility. So that is the flexibility is the common denominator with which the PM 2020 has been promulgated, in which many simplification simplification of procedures uh, have been given have been done, and also empowerment of project directors in DRDO. They have done internal structures uh, modifications to functional uh, the improvement in terms of decision making so that you don't have to go everything centrally. So you have the DG for each cluster, and also they have pro project or program directors. They can take direction. They are empowered to take the, uh, the, uh, the decisions. So that is how the decision making is very fast. And also the private participation is going to come in design, development, prototypes, even test and evaluation. Uh, even uh, we, are, we are thinking about GOKO, the government owned and company operated kind of systems. So you see a different kind of ecosystem today in MOD. And uh, MOD is also giving a lot of uh, the flexibility in their procurement system. They have already promulgated more than 100 items not to be imported. So that gives a great uh, the market available today where next at least next five years is not going to be imported. And DRDO has put 108 items which they want directly to procure from the industry to make, uh, it could be a system, it could be a subsystem, it could be a device or component. So here is a market, the DRU has created that market with their budget is 18,000 crores per annum. So most of them will go into R&D, leaving away 30% into pay and relevance, maintenance and so on. So it's a huge market, I'm sure this DRU's uh, the timely uh, the uh, an announcement by our Honorable Defense Minister Sri Rajnath Singh is going to really make a lot of difference in terms of strengthening the partnership with uh, medium, small scale industries, including the micro industries and startups, particularly startups, which is coming up now, they right. will be empowered and they will, they may not have money to even uh, deposit uh, uh, um, the earnest money to deposit. So, uh, so, and then there could be delay in development. So we have considered all this in DRDO. It has, it has taken a very good uh, policy to make it very flexible. Even the startups to have the, the flexibility of operation, even the LD class, for example, which used to be very, very punitive. Now they have simplified. So even if there's a delay in the development and uh, you could still consider the, uh, the, the waving of then faster execution. Now mm -hmm. R&D is taking about six months. Now it is going to be compressed to one month. So that is the sure. kind of time, time uh, uh, the advantage we will get with this flexibility of system in R&D, which is very, very important. So overall, I think the right kind of ecosystem has been created by the uh, manual, uh, the procurement manual 2020 of DRTO. Sure. Okay. So all right. Uh, Ratan Srivastava, let me bring you to the picture now. So what does this mean for the industry? Uh, thanks, uh, Frank, and uh, thanks for inviting me to the show. And this is a very vital question. So Dr. Silvamurthy has covered the aspects of uh, how it is an opportunity for the industry. I would say uh, we should see it in three aspects. One is this on the value chain. Value chain means right from design and development for which this current uh, PM 2020 actually lays a lot of emphasis on. It is encourage it is helped to encourage the design and development in the MSME and the startup sector. You see, there are so many concessions which have been given up to projects worth 10 lakhs. And the startups, uh, especially the startup community, which is incubated in the Indian Institute of Technologies and Engineering Colleges. Uh, they are very bright and they come up with solutions which are out of the box, but they do not have the cash or the cash flows to sustain that. So this is something which is very, I would say, encouraging in the value chain. So design and development going on to prototyping, then manufacture, evaluation, production, and post-life. This is the entire value chain as we know. How does this PM2020 come in, the entire scheme of things is this, that if we see, Frank, the IDEX of the government, of, of the Ministry of Defense and the DISC of the Ministry of Defense, which I'm talking about the Innovations for Defense Excellence and Defense India Startup Challenge, which are already existing. If we see this in consonance with that, there is a whole ecosystem which is emerging 
for startups and MSMEs to prosper in this value chain. And then when they tie up with the government or with the private industry, because make one and make two are for the private sector and the government separately, government uh, uh, industry separately, they can become a part of the larger picture which they could not even aspire earlier. This is a huge opportunity. We must see it in that context. Uh, having said that, uh, it's easier said than done on paper. We have seen many a challenge come up in the execution part of it. That's that's something that we need to uh, possibly see that we do not fail in that aspect. Uh, as that 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 said, I think this is a very current step in the value chain aspect. In the supply chain, when a startup or an MSME makes a equipment which is let's say to support indigenization program or the or as uh, dr murthy selva murthy said the 108 items which have been put out for manufacture if they make it the supply chain that is a part of it which, we, which is to say the preferred development partner as we call in the in the language that we use in defense the preferred development partner always becomes a part of that system and then it is not only beneficial for that particular startup or MSME uh, to, be, to, to benefit, but also the entire supply chain which gets benefit. Sure. So this is, uh, this is something we need to understand that how in the fitness of things, not only DM2020 helps the MSME and the startups, but it also goes on if we see it from the Make in India policy of the government, the Art Libra policy of the government and the DISC and the IDEX. This fits into very beautifully in the scheme of things. Sure. Okay. Points taken. Let me take the discussion forward now. So, uh, you know, Ajay Banerjee, uh, do we have the wherewithal to be fully independent as far as defense manufacturing is concerned? What is it that the startups and these uh, MSMEs can bring to the table? Frank, a very vital question because I think everybody will coexist. This Atamnirbhar Bharat does not mean that the foreign companies have been shunned out. Actually, the Make in India project is a very big opportunity for foreign companies to come here, set up a plant, Indians are qualified, have a good manufacturing facility out there, leave out the plants which they have in Europe or in the US, come and set up a new plant for the Asian market. It is not that the Make in India closes out the opportunity for foreign industry. And keep in mind, we need foreign collaboration in several sectors at the moment. Let us not get carried away. Because aero engines, AI, that is, auto, that is artificial intelligence, robotics, uh, better better quality of guidance seekers, the metallurgy. We are yet to start off on metallurgy. It is It will take, take some time, actually. We should have started off as on yesterday. And uh, we need the foreign collaboration, let us be clear. Atam Nilpar Bharat is a great opportunity for foreign foreign uh, suppliers to come in. How I see it, we are not in, if, nobody makes a complete process. Today, uh, I believe possibly even the US does not make a full aeroplane or, uh, for a, or a naval warship. It sources part from Europe. Similarly, Europe does not make everything on its own. So say one country doesn't make everything on its own. Similarly, we will also not make everything on our own. Let us not get carried away. We will make several things. We want to make aero engines. DRDO has been tasked to get top quality aero engines. Uh, we are talking of aero engines, Frank, which will power the advanced medium combat aircraft. And we're talking of 125 kN thrust. We, at the moment, are at 90 kN thrust with our planes are using. We are talking of 125 kN thrust. All this needs foreign collaboration because you cannot reinvent the wheel and start making an aero engine all again because there are five, five or six countries which are making aero engines. I'm just giving an example. And two, three of them are keen to come and work in India. Let us uh, climb on their shoulders and uh, start making aero engines. DRDO has been tasked to look out for such cutting edge technology. They will go in for that. And in as far as uh, this new policy, I want to make a very critical point, Frank. There are almost 70 new additions to the manual, which opens up a lot of possibilities. And critically, what I see the most critical aspect is that the participation of the industry in design and development that is very critical because the private industry does not have the wherewithal or the money to spend on r d we are not let us not compare ourselves with the boeing or the lockheed martins or the airbus we are not there our industry is just about to stand up in the defense sector they don't have those 40 billion or 40 50 billion dollars to spend the foreign companies which i just named spend a couple of billion dollars annually just on r d we don't have that much of money so this helping hand of the government to involve the private industry in uh, design and development activities will go a long way, Frank, in my opinion. Okay, points taken. All right. So, 
Uh, let's talk about another aspect, uh, you know, Dr. Salvamurthy, as far as uh, defense procurement is concerned or defense manufacturing is concerned, let's not forget that defense is a very strategic sector. So how much of give and take can we expect really between, uh, you know, the public sector and the private sector? I would consider both public sector and private sector as a national asset whether it's funded by, supported by government or facilitated by government. So I would say, let us not put silos and borders, boundaries. So I would, I would still say that it's a national asset. How do we harness the potentials of both defense PSUs as well as the private sector? And how do we bridge, make bridges between these two? I'll give an example. If you say Akash Misai, Today, the order is for about 40,000 crores, one, one missile. And DDL alone may not have the capacity to produce this. Even to produce this, they may have to, they don't have that much, even LCA. If you have to uh, yeah, augment the production, you cannot do only by HAL. So certainly the private sector augmentation with the PSUs, defense PSUs is very vital. For One is manufacturing. And the second is even in the development, because today if you look at R&D capabilities in defense PSUs, is uh, uh, needs to be further strengthened, even though the MOD is making a lot of efforts and they are comfortable with license production, TOT. So the R&D culture is being created now in the PSUs. So that is where we can bring in the uh, MSMEs, where with the new startup linked with defense PSUs. So, so let us not isolate the uh, private sector separately, but we would like to integrate them together with this new policy that some of the components, uh, subsystems, devices could be made in the MSME, which may be even required by the, the defense PSUs, but they cannot make everything. So I, I think this kind of bedding between these two are vital. And so, uh, now MSME is becoming empowered also, and the DRDO is the major R&D hub for the defense technologies, defense products. So we can use it like my brain and your hands. Some, you know, some of them can originate the ideas, concepts can be generated by DRDO, and then they put it, this is what we are looking for. These are the so, GSQR, which we are looking at. These are the technologies projected for the next 15 years, the perspective planning for technologies. But this could be given to even academic institution, besides the MSMEs, because that is where you have the young, brilliant, like IITs, NITs, private universities, like Amity University, for example, we are doing some projects for defense. So what I want to say is, let us create the whole ecosystem in the country, rather than defense PSU should do this and private sector mm -hmm. should do mm -hmm. boundaries. There should be great overlapping between these and this the PM 2020 gives that opportunity for this very uh, uh, seamless interface between the private sector and public sectors. Absolutely. All right. So, Ratan Srivastava, when we're talking about collaboration, when we're talking about the private sector and the public sector coming together, what more needs to be done so that we can see them working harmoniously? Um, so, I think two parts to this, uh, uh, Frank. One is, of course, I take on from where Dr. Silvamurthy said that we should see in uh, see the private sector and the public sector contribution as one whole. Uh, but uh, that's a very ideal situation. We must always remember that, you know, the public sector uh, obviously had to has a net positive EBITDA, but it is more important for a private sector to have a net positive EBITDA. If they do not have a positive earnings, they will not be able to sustain themselves, pay their salaries, and they will not be a going concern. So that's a huge challenge, uh, given the given the uh, prominence that private sector has not had till now, uh, in comparison to the public sector. Uh, but having said that, uh, I would say uh, not only this PM two zero two zero, but earlier aspects of make a, make in India program and the make one and make two both have been supportive of the private sector, and the private sector has always played a very major role as partners in the defense. Uh, manufacturing ecosystem in India, in the clusters that have been incubated in several parts of the country where public sector industry has actually uh, come up, whether it is the Bangalore aviation ecosystem, which is incubated by HL in a way, and uh, the uh, private sector enterprises have come up over there as supply chain partners and vendors, 
or if we talk about uh, Pune, where again private and public sector entities have been uh, sort of uh, fueling the uh, private sector enterprise. But you know, private sector now needs to move from that to the next big game. We have only one LNT, for example. We have only one Tata's, for example. Mm. We can. Uh, we we need to have many more. We, uh, and for example, the Tejas is one huge example of how the public sector and the private sector has come up together to manufacture an aircraft which is world class. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Dynamatic is making the fuselage and uh, HL is assembling the aircraft and a whole lot of uh, items are being made, uh, being sourced from the private industry. But uh, the engine, the engine is not ours. And as sure. Ajay said, Ajay said, you know, engine or uh, engine is one. So any cutting edge technology, state of the art technology that we require, we definitely require investments from the private sector. And that includes, by definition, not only the Indian private sector, but the foreign OEMs as well, uh, which obviously have a huge role to play in India with the uh, liberalized FDI regime that we have for military uh, production in India. All right. Okay. Points taken. Quick uh, closing comments now from all my panelists. Limited time. So best way forward, starting first with you, uh, Ajay Banerjee. Well, uh, good start. The DRDO has made a good start. The MOD has made a good start. And several new policies have come about. Minister Rajnath Singh has taken very keen interest in the matters of the Ministry of Defense, especially with regards to amending policies. In the past five to eight months, he's amended a lot of new policies, brought on new changes. And I hope this carries on. Best of luck to him. Absolutely. All right, Dr. Salva Murthy. The DRU now is looking for a new paradigm. They, are, they have internally reorganized, functionally empowered. And with this new policy of uh, PM 2020, I will see uh, tremendous faster activities because they have, the government itself has given that autonomy and flexibility to a large extent to a defense department, which is DRDO. So that's a great welcome change from the Ministry of Defense and also Government of India. I would like to see many fast developments with the involvement of this rich resource, the talent pool available both in MSME as well as in the PSUs together. When we bring that, that's a force multiplier. That's what I would like to say that that blending and seamless interaction and removing the barriers, developing confidence in each other will bring a revolutionary change in the defense industry. And Ratan, close the show for us with your concluding remarks. Thanks, Frank, as always. So I think, uh, you know, this is a huge opportunity for the entire value chain starting from design and development and research and development is something which really needs focus in India. And this PM2020 aims to definitely give a boost to that. So entire value chain from research and development, design and development, prototyping, and down to, of course, the life cycle equipment, life cycle of the equipment. I would like to say something. Atmanirbhar Bharat is what it is supporting. And Atmanirbhar Bharat is a self-reliant and a self-sustainable India. It is not a closed India, which people are always mistake it for. And a self-sustaining India requires the efforts of the private sector, the public sector, and everybody together to come up and make India shine the way it should be. Okay. On, on that note, then, I'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective. For us, what's coming out of this discussion is that DRDO is creating a conducive environment and an ecosystem as far as defense manufacturing in the country is concerned. It has listed out 108 items that it would want to procure from the industry and the public sector and private sector need to work together keeping national